So last year, the team and I over at Red Chip Poker decided we wanted to run the world's first, most comprehensive live GTO poker solve ever done for prefop. We did it. Took a very, very long time. We built an app to be able to give you the entire data set. And today it is finally available for you to go check out. And I want to share all of the open raising ranges with you. You can also get them for free today in the app. Just look for the GTO Poker Ranges app on any app store, Android or Apple, or just go to redchippoker.com slash app to learn more about it. And let's just dive into these ranges now. <music> Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and today I want to go through some of the ranges from the live GTO solve with you. I want to go through all of the open raising ranges, but before we even get there, I want to give you some quick pretext on what this overall solve is. Since a lot of people, when they say, oh, we have GTO ranges, don't really tell you what the heck they are, where the heck they came from, how the heck they work. So I wanted to clear that up now. So here is what the overall live GTO solve looked like and also how long it took. So the overall solve looks at a cross section of live games. So we took eight handed games overall, since that seems to be pretty standard nowadays. We took 100 big blind effective stacks. We took a four big blind open, again, very representative of live play, as opposed to something like online, where those open raise sizes are a little bit smaller. And the post flop game tree was a fairly simplified, but representative overall post flop game tree. So that is the overall thing. And once we plugged all that into the solver, got it all set up, it took, I believe, about three months with the solver running 24 seven with two terabytes of RAM. Not two terabytes of storage, two terabytes of RAM. So this is a massively, massively huge solve. And a couple other prefop features of the solve. One, we did not solve for open limping prefop. So if it folds to you prefop, the only options you have are between folding and open raising. This is a very, very big distinction as to try to solve for prefop open limping is a massive, massive endeavor. And then number two is that we allowed for zero, one, or two callers prefop. So if someone open raises, then you have the option to have zero callers, one caller, or two callers. And every single extra caller you add into that prefop solve gets more and more expensive and takes that much longer. So keep that in mind. This is why a lot of players, when they try to even do something like a prefop GTO solve, oftentimes they have to make cuts and sometimes it's no callers or sometimes it's a single caller. But even having two prefop callers in here is a really, really big deal. So keep that in mind. And again, this is part of the reason why it took so darn long and needed so much RAM in order to do this solve in the first place. And for what it's worth, we had to go a step further here as well, because we couldn't just take all of these ranges and how are the heck are we going to give them to you, right? We're going to just create each one as an individual PDF, like that's going to be egregious. I think the overall output for this solve is like 16,000 ish individual prefop ranges. Like that would just be staggering in PDF form. That sucks. Are we going to give you a monk reviewer file? Like that sucks, especially if you've ever really worked with monk reviewer stuff. So how the heck are we going to give this to you? And that's what started the app development for the GTO ranges app. So that's kind of what had to happen just in order to give you this overall solve. And it is finally, again, ready for you to go download, check out, and start using today. So with all that said, let's start by looking at the under the gun range first, and we'll just go through all of the open raising ranges from under the gun all the way to the small blind. Let's get started now. All right, so let's start by looking at the under the gun open raising range, and here we go. And at first glance, this might look a little bit weird, but let's just kind of look at the overall range. I'll give you kind of the lay of the land if you haven't used the app yet. So if you see a hand that is bolded, it means that it is included in the current parameter. So in this situation, it means it is an open raise, and the red is all hands that should be raised. And if you see a cell that is bolded, but you really can't see much red, it means there is red, but not a tremendous amount of raising with that hand. So a good example of that in this particular situation is ace jack. You look at ace jack, it is bolded, but you don't really see much red. And that's because it is a 0.5% open raising range from under the gun based from the solver's overall output. So you see hands like pocket fives and five four suited, right? Don't have a tremendous amount of red. That is simply because they're included, but only 
only slightly when it comes to the silver suggestion. So looking at the range overall, we're looking at something like 10s plus, ace queen plus, ace 10 suited plus, king 10 suited plus, and also interesting things like queen jack suited and ace five suited and ace four suited are fully included. And then you have hands like ace eight suited, which are largely included, some king nine suited, which might be a little bit shocking getting opened around 23% of the time, jack 10 suited being raised about 33% of the time. And of course, if you're not raising it, the only other option based upon these solve parameters would be to just simply fold it. And some people might be a little shocked that nines is only included about half the time, pocket eights about 22.5% of the time. And it might seem weird. Why would you have full inclusion of ace five suited, but not full inclusion of something like pocket nines? Well, the solver is pretty notorious for doing that. And a big factor here is that remember the solver is going to play perfectly at every single inflection point, perfectly preflop when facing things like three bets. It's going to play perfectly if it gets one or two colors and it has to go post flop. These are very, very important parameters. I've gotten in discussions about this on the Discord. People say, oh, well, why is this prioritized and not that? Well, remember, the solver is going to play totally perfect. That's the overall thought process. Whereas real humans, especially if you're newer to poker, you're still working on your post-flop play, it might seem a little bit weird to throw in something like Ace-5 suited, which could have a lot of reverse implied odds, as opposed to something like Pocket Nines, which tends to be a little bit simpler to play. But again, this is the solver output and also the raw solver output, right? We didn't do any simplification methodology on this. This is just simply exactly what the solver says it would do in this situation. And you notice that it's raising out of the gun just 9.3% of the time. Not a ton, roughly one in 10 times it's getting into an open raise, the rest of the time just simply folding. So pretty darn tight but also a very, very predictable and pretty logical range as far as I can tell. But one of the things that I think is interesting to note is if you try to build your own kind of default open raising range, you think the average person in your game is open raising from this situation, I think a lot of players would actually be very close to the overall frequency. If you take a range like sixes plus, ace jack plus, king queen, both suited and offsuit, and also king jack suited, you're looking at a range that's 9.2% of hands. And I think for a lot of players, that's actually pretty darn close to what they would open raise with. Again, taking out players that will do a tremendous amount of open limping. I think this is a pretty typical range that people will use as a pure, pure default. Some players are a little tighter, some players a little bit looser, but I think overall that's pretty darn close. So it's interesting that the frequency is close, but the overall range construction is actually quite different, right? If you're taking a quote default range of full sixes plus, full ace jack plus, etc. That's a lot different than like partial sixes, partial nines even, and looking at things like ace five suited, even ace 10 suited as a pure open, king 10 suited as a pure open, queen jack suited as a pure open from under the gun, which a lot of players simply won't do. But again, part of this is based upon the fact that this solver is going to play perfectly at every single inflection point. And another aspect that's really important is also protection when they face a three bet, right? If under the gun decides to open and let's just say the button three bets them, well, if you look at the under the gun's response to that, you know, part of the benefit of having things like ace five suited, ace four suited in the overall open raising range is that you also have these combinations that can defend in four bet against a three bet, which is very, very helpful and good to know. Same thing with king jack suited, king 10 suited. Those are partial four bets against a button three bet when opening from under the gun. Again, totally based upon the solver's suggestion. So hopefully that kind of helps like the overall understanding of what could be going in here. And also I think again, it's very important to compare what the solver suggestion is to what you think the average default player in your game is looking like, both to compare the frequency and also look at the overall construction of that frequency. All right, looking at middle position next, we notice the range starts to get a little bit wider, but not crazy, right? We're going from roughly 9.3 to 10.7% of hands. And the construction is very similar similar shape, just a slight increase on certain hands, right? More pocket nines this time, full things like king queen as opposed to partial, some more ace jack, some more king jack offsuit, and a little bit more things like pocket eights and pretty much everything else is looking pretty darn standard and that should make a lot of sense, right? These frequencies run very, very close together. So there's not going to be an egregious change going from under the gun to middle position. You still notice the solver is definitely favoring a very, very tight overall approach from these earlier positions, which makes a tremendous amount of sense overall. 
and then moving over to the low jack, which again is pretty much a middle position position. We're looking at a 12.6% open raising range. So a little bit wider, nothing too, too crazy. Again, you're noticing just a larger addition, mostly of hands that were already included, just adding more of them. So now we're up to full ace jack, we're up to more king jack offsuit. We're looking at a hair of king 10 off, exactly 1%. And we're looking at a little bit more inclusion along the ace x suited. Right now, all of a sudden we have full ace nine, we have almost full ace seven suited. But you'll notice a higher focus on adding hands like that as opposed to adding more and more combinations of things like pocket sevens, pocket sixes, even pocket fives is down to or only at 0.5% open raising range which most people looking at that would just simplify that out to say, okay, well, I'm just never going to open fives. Well, to solvers we just open it 0.5% of the time. But again, it, it was a pretty much a logical simplification to say, okay, well, I guess fives just won't be included here. So again, notice the solver, how it's prioritizing the overall construction and notice that the frequency again, still isn't crazy. We're only at 12 and a half, 12.6% of hands, not a tremendously large number by any stretch of the imagination. Next, moving on to the hijack, things start to get a little bit looser, slowly but surely. Now we're up to 15.7% of hands. So we're noticing a larger gap in terms of that frequency getting a little bit larger and larger. If you look at the overall range construction, now we're finally up to full pocket eights. Pocket sevens is roughly half, actually exactly half, and a little bit more in terms of pocket sixes going up to 30% inclusion there for open raising. Ace 10 is almost full, King Jack is finally full, King 10 off has a little bit, but again, you notice that the inclusion of hands is typically getting favored in the kind of strong Broadway section as opposed to the pocket pair section. Most people, if they're actually building their own ranges, aren't typically going to prioritize opening, say, more king eight suited from this position. They're usually going to prioritize more pocket fours, pocket fives, pocket sixes, if not opening all pocket pairs from this position by this point. So again, this is where you can really start to see some massive deviation between what people are actually doing and what the solver suggests you actually do. So keep that in mind. And again, the double Broadway stuff, we're not fully full on opening any two Broadway cards. We still have zero inclusion of Jack-10 offsuit. We have a little inclusion of King-10 off at 7%, but ultimately we definitely have more inclusion on the upper left-hand corner with a little bit more trickling over to that ace-x suited and the king-x suited getting a little bit more filled through as well. And the Another major thing to mention is we have full queen nine suited from the hijack, which we did not have at all from previous positions. All right, now finally moving on to more of the default stealing positions from the cutoff button and small blind. Let's go cutoff next. And you notice that we get a massive frequency jump up, which might actually seem a little bit tight, especially if you play online and you see a lot of stealing overall. A 21.6% ATS is not necessarily the largest by any stretch of the imagination. But I think there's a couple things to point out here. One, again, is the overall construction and noticing that we still, still don't have full pocket fives. We don't have full pocket sixes even. Instead, we have things like full ace nine offsuit, full queen 10 offsuit, well, roughly full. It's 98.5%, but pretty much full. And you also notice things like full jack nine suited and full king seven suited. We finally have every single ace x suited hand involved here, and we have more king x suited as well, getting most of even king six suited into the mix. And a couple of things might stand out here. First and foremost, again, you don't have full inclusion of all pocket pairs. That's interesting. You don't have full inclusion of all suited connectors either, which a lot of people would default open raise here. And you also, if you were paying attention, 5-4 suited was involved in previous ranges and 5-4 suited is actually not here at all at this point. And I think it's important to, at least for a moment, try to figure out why that might be the case. One thing we have to keep in mind when it comes to GTO solvers is what the solver is assuming. And the solver is assuming that every single person is going to play perfectly at every single inflection point from this point forward. So if the cutoff is going to open this range, the button is going to three bet 
perfectly. It's going to call perfectly. It's going to play post flop perfectly at every single stage. Same thing with the small blind and also the big blind. So that is a massive, massive thing that is obviously very different from real life where people are not going to play totally GTO perfect. It's impossible for a human to play perfect, perfect GTO. So keep that in mind as well. So it's not uncommon for us to throw in something like 9-8 suited or prioritize full pocket pairs at this point or even open full king-9 offsuit and probably actually be a little bit wider than what the solver is suggesting right this moment because there are kinks in our opponent's ranges. Most of them don't three bet well enough, especially from out of position. Maybe they're overfolding a lot of the time, so we can add more hands into our steel range because we're simply going to pick up the pot preflop uncontested a good chunk of the time. Even if they continue, they're probably going to make a lot of postflop blunders, and as such, that's why you see the exploitative range starts to deviate massively from the GTO solver suggestion. But if we're looking at why the solver might be suggesting this, well, it's probably not going to prioritize these smaller pocket pairs where you, I'm sorry, the smaller pocket pairs and also the smaller suited connectors or even most suited connectors in general, right? We have full 10-9 suited. We don't have full 7-6 suited. And we don't have really any 9-8 suited or 8-7 suited. And I think the reason for that is the reverse implied odds and all of these other factors and also considering that your opponents will 3-bet perfectly. Again, in the GTO solve, not in real life, where things can change dramatically. And at this point, you might be questioning, should I even use these ranges in the first place? Since if our opponents aren't perfect GTO and they're not going to play perfectly GTO pre-flop nor post-flop, why limit myself to just playing these ranges? Or why not just actually tighten this up a little bit if I'm not totally comfortable both pre-flop and post-flop yet? And that's a very valid question. What I would suggest is trying these for a couple of different sessions and seeing what they feel like, what they look like, what mistakes you may be making, and see what happens. Are you really going to lose very much by not raising pocket threes from the cutoff here? I doubt it. If you could open pocket threes here, you could probably open a lot of other hands too. So are you also opening full ace eight and full king nine off and all that kind of fun stuff as well? If not, I would start to question those things and think about your overall exploitative range. But again, I think overall taking these for a spin is totally, totally worthwhile, at least worth a shot for a session or two, see how they feel. And number two, based upon the back of that, is this app and all of these ranges are not things you should be looking at in real time. These are simply a study tool. You use these between sessions to start to memorize them and then recall them and use memory in real time to recall what range you should be using. Do not, do not, do not, do not use these in real time. There's no reason to get a possible RTA charge or accusation. Just simply use these as an off session table reminder as a study tool and then in real time just use your pure memory. I cannot stress that enough. Please do not use the app in real time. All right, so let's continue on. We got a couple of ranges left and getting into the button we get our widest range yet at roughly a third of overall hands. But again, you notice we don't even have full pocket pairs. No deuces, no threes, some pocket fours. That's kind of interesting. And again, because we don't have any open limping as a possibility in the overall game tree, that's all going to be folds. Interesting that the solver chooses that. But notice what it does prioritize. Ace-5 offsuit. Ace six offsuit. We have half roughly of king eight off. We're finally into some suited connectors, but we're only a partial seven six suited. We don't even have six five suited or five four suited. And we have things like king three suited plus. We have queen six suited plus, jack seven suited plus. So you notice that this is a very different range than what most people would use. Most people, if they're going to raise a range that's similar to this from the button, it's probably going to be all pocket pairs. So full deuces, full three reads full fours. Probably going to be just including all of the other ace-x offsuit combos as well. If you're going to open ace-5 off and some ace-4 off, well, why not just open full ace-deuce offsuit plus? And probably a little bit wider because there's going to be things like suited connectors and probably full 9-7, full 8-6 suited, etc. So again, this is definitely looking like a range that a lot of real people are not actually going to use, but it is curious that the solver again prioritizes this frequency, but constructs it in such a way that again is pretty atypical from what humans would typically decide to use. All right, and getting into our final open raising position, the small blind, and just for the record in case you're like, well, why can't the big blind open raise? Because open raising implies that everyone folded to you and then there was a raise given the option to. 
it can't fold to you in the big blind like that because even if it folds to you, it means everyone folded, so no chance to open raise. Or maybe the small blind completed, but again, there was action prior to you, so it is impossible to open raise from the big blind. Maybe it's just a semantics term, but I think it's very, very important to understand that because some people will be confused. Well, why in the heck isn't the big blind included? included here that is why so not shocking the small blind range is the widest open raising range that we have at 40.4 percent of hands and that's simply because there's only a single player left between the small blind and picking up the pot uncontested preflop so not shocking at all that this is the range that's being suggested now the actual construction, congratulations, we finally did it. All pocket pairs, they're all included, awesome. And we also have some suited connectors, so six, five suited plus. We have most five, four suited at what, roughly 77% of those are being included. And you notice that we have full king two suited, we have queen three suited plus, we have jack five suited plus, and we have some suited connectors, suited gappers, and even suited double gappers with things like nine, six suited being fully included as well. So again, the construction makes a decent amount of sense. Might be a little shocking to not see things like ace deuce off and ace three off being fully included. And even ace four offsuit is only 89% of the way included. But this is a pretty typical way of constructing this kind of range. And for most people, this is probably gonna look a little bit more natural than some of the other ranges that have been suggested so far. But while this range is very interesting, it's also probably the least pertinent. And primarily because in live cash games, there's a lot of chopping that happens so if it folds around to the small blind and big blind they typically tend to agree just to chop it both take their blinds back and move on to the next hand go forward so the small blind doesn't usually take the option to open raise because again live chopping is just so incredibly standard so kind of something you want to be keeping in mind but it's also something i couldn't really solve for i couldn't tell the solver hey they're going to be chopping the blinds when it folds to the small blind because what the heck is the solver going to do with that and besides if you're playing in a game that does have a lot of live chopping this is still very very good to know overall just know it might not come into play a ton especially if you play in a game with a lot of chops and keep in mind you can keep all of these ranges in your pocket totally for free they're all included in the free section of the app you don't have to buy it at all in order to get all of these so you don't have to keep coming back to this video and re-watching it just go to your app store look for the gto poker ranges app go to the free section the full ring live gto and there you go everything is right where you need it to be. That being said, if you want the entire solve, including all of the calling ranges prefab, all of the three bet ranges, all of the four bet ranges, all the call verse three bet ranges, all of that is included in the premium version and I would highly suggest it. And again, I definitely suggest if nothing else, even though yes, in your average live game, you're not going to be playing perfect GTO. You're not going to be playing against perfect GTO opponents. It's still extremely helpful to try these ranges from time to time. And I think doing so for a couple of sessions is going to be extremely eye-opening and really help you understand, actually, here's where I can deviate better. And here's how I can craft a very, very safe overall prefab strategy. Because again, none of these ranges are like crazy, crazy loose by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, we're ranging all the way from roughly a 9% range of hands from under the gun all the way up to what, 40.4 in the small blind. So it's not egregious by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, this is probably a lot tighter than you're probably used to. And that can be very, very beneficial, keep you out of trouble until you have the skill set to be able to say, okay, here's when and why and how I can open up my preflop game, if nothing else, being a little bit tighter, a little bit closer to the GTO solution is probably going to be a little bit better for quite a few of you watching this video. And that is going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions on any of the ranges, any of the thought process, anything we talked about in this video, please do not hesitate to leave a comment. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more like this, where we go through some of the ranges from the overall app, please give the video a thumbs up. And also let me know what you want to see more of. You can always let us know on the Discord redshippoker.com slash discord to join for free today fire in there fire questions post hands and also just jump in a conversation with a community that loves poker just as much as you do so again if you need anything at all please don't hesitate to let me know otherwise thank you so much for hanging out today i'll see you back shortly with a brand new video and in the meantime good luck out there and happy grinding